Hi guys, welcome to the structure of DNA and RNA. So in terms of the specification, um, you need to be able to describe the structure of the nucleic acids, know how to uh, draw a single nucleotide which will make polymers like DNA and RNA and describe the structure of this. Also, we will be looking at the condensation reaction of the nucleotides that will form a phosphodiester bond. Okay, so in terms of the uh, terminology that you should be aware of from before, it's polymer, monomer, bond, and condensation and hydrolysis reaction. So those we're uh, bringing again, and we need to apply the new knowledge about DNA and RNA. So what is uh, DNA? DNA is a deoxyribonucleic acid and RNA is called ribonucleic acids. They are important to uh, carry uh, inf information about the molecules. DNA holds genetic information. RNA transfers genetic information from DNA to ribosomes, hence of protein synthesis. Ribosomes are made from RNA and proteins and both DNA and RNA are polymers of nucleotides. So nucleotide is a monomer. So how does a nucleotide then look like? This, uh, uh, this is the nucleotide, so it contains a phosphate group, contains a pentose sugar, which has five carbons, and nitrogen-containing base. So the condensation reaction between those two will form a phosphodiester bond. So this bond will be present between the phosphate and the pentose. Okay, so phosphodiester bond consists of the phosphate group and two ester bonds, and the chain of sugar and phosphate is known as a sugar phosphate backbone. Okay, so this is how our sugar phosphate backbone would follow. So there are differences between DNA nucleotide and RNA nucleotide, as we can see here. The difference comes basically from the sugar. So both of the sugars are pentoses, so contains uh, five elements of carbon. But that one is called deoxyribose, and this is ribose in RNA. Also, there is a difference in the nitrogen-containing bases. So the difference is uh, between thymine in DNA and uracil base in RNA. So those are the main differences that you should be aware of. And of course, both of them contain the phosphate group. So there is no change to that. So in terms of the DNA molecule, of course, it's a polymer. It's a double helix, as we can see here on the picture, uh, which, uh, which is made of two polynucleotide chains held together by weak hydrogen bonds. Those hydrogen bonds we can find between the nitrogen-containing bases in the manner that cytosine always binds with guanine by three hydrogen bonds and adenine binds with thymine by two hydrogen bonds. The, um, the strands are antiparallel, as we can see on that picture here. So the, one of the strands when we run in the three, uh, three prime to five prime direction, why the other one will do it in 5 prime to uh, 3 prime. Where is this coming from? 3 stands for the carbon. So as you can see, for example, here, that's the uh, carbon number 3. Okay, we've got carbon number 3. Here we've got carbon number 5. And that then shows you when the, phosphate, uh, when the phosphodiester bond is created. So if the strand starts with 5, runs to 3, so that's the, where the phosphodiester bond is. And the same manner applies on the other strand spot, starting with 3 prime, so refers to carbon number 3. So the fact about those 3 and 5 primes is really important because you need to remember that the nucleotides can be added only in the 5, uh, five prime to 3, three prime directions. So we can add them in here or in there from 5 to 3. Okay, and uh, in terms of the, uh, of the basis, we did say 
that they are joining in the manner when the timing always goes with adenine and guanine with the cytosine in DNA. So every time they're asking you to work out how many bases will be in there, but they give you, for example, adenine 18%. So adenine, okay, and thymine, they both will have 18. So in total, that's 36, okay? And that's percent. So you know that in total, we will have 100% minus 36, which will be 64. 64% then refers to what we've got left. So guanine and cytosine. So we need to divide this by Two, which will give you 32% for guanine and also 32 for cytosine. Thymine will be exactly the same like adenine states 18. Um, here we need to name the part uh, of uh, the nucleotide labeled F. Obviously, it's a sugar, but you need to be specific. If you're talking about DNA molecule, it's a deoxyribose. So, what is then uh, the really uh, important fact about the stability of the DNA? It's the fact that we've got two bonds in there. So the phosphodiester bond between the sugar and the phosphate, between the deoxyribose and the phosphate. So um, we also got the hydrogen bonds, many weak hydrogen bonds, which will be present between the, the nitrogen base pairs. So in terms of the so what approach, again, we need to be able to look at the function and the structure of the DNA. So that by having the base press between the helical cylinder of the deoxyribose phosphate backbone, the genetic information is uh, to some extent protected from being uh, corrupted by outside, okay? The stable because obviously They've got many high, weak hydrogen bonds. They will pass the uh, information from the generation to generation. It's two separate strands, so they can act as templates. So they can use uh, be used in DNA replication. Both of the strands will act as a template, or in protein synthesis, just one. It is extremely large, so it will carry uh, loads of genetic information. And the base press leads to DNA being able to replicate and to transfer information as mRNA. So you will learn about this in terms of the protein synthesis that the information from DNA in transcription will be uh, coded uh, then later on for mRNA, which will decide about the uh, sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide chain. So Typical question, make sure you write this down and remember, explain how the structure is related to its function. So how to approach this question? First, in your sentence, you will list the structure of DNA and then link it by, so what man talking about the function? So we've got plenty here. So it's helix, so provides strength. Okay, it's long so can store lots of information, it's called so compact base information, okay, uh, are used to de determine the sequence of amino acids, double-stranded, so used as a template, what we've mentioned for the uh, semi-conservative replication or protein synthesis, it has many weak hydrogen bonds for the replication, so those are, again, so what approaches, look how many of those we already did. So DNA is a polymer of a nucleotide, and each nucleotide contains an organic base. Explain how the organic bases help to stabilize the structure of DNA. So organic bases link to structure and say how why. So the important thing how they maintain the structure. So why are they stable? Because you've got many of those hydrogen bonds, okay, that pairs uh, with the bases to hold two strands together and they provide the strength. So next we've got the RNA molecule, which we will look at in more detail in section four. So RNA is a single short polynucleotide 
chain, we've got three types of them. So mRNA, which is single-stranded, tRNA, it's single-stranded, but it's folded into a clover leaf shape. And 